Hey, it's Kendrick with Technology Interpreters and welcome to the channel where I teach you the actual skills you need to get a job in cybersecurity. So today we're going to be covering part four of the series on PowerShell. If you haven't watched the previous series, please go back, but I'm going to make this simple so you can even follow along with this one. So the first thing you want to do, let's go ahead and change over to our VM, right? So we've learned how to get a list of processes. That's the programs that are running on the computer currently. We've learned how to stop processes. And today we're going to learn how to start process and some options with starting a process. I've got a freshly reset VM right here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to type PowerShell. All right, not three L's. Okay. And sorry. And you, what, what you want to do, you can go here and you can choose run as administrator here, or you can right click here and choose run as administrator. Either one is fine. The reason we need to do this is because a lot of times we're going to be taking access access or taking actions on processes that may require elevated or administrative privileges, okay? So this is gonna come up and this is gonna prompt me for the user account control. I'm gonna select yes here. And at this point, PowerShell in theory should open, there it is right there. So I'm gonna also show you a really neat trick because let's say for instance, PowerShell opens and you don't necessarily like the size of the font. So you can go to properties, font, and I usually make the font very big because I want you to be able to see it on your phone. So I'm going to choose here and there we go. I'm going to bring this up to 36. That should be really, really large. All right. So you should be able to see that pretty good. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down just a little bit so you can see those commands. Actually, a lot of commands I run uh, should be fine. So I'll drag this over just a little bit. Hopefully my picture won't block it. Now, the first thing we want to do, let's start with something simple. Notepad is on just about every Windows machine. So the command we're going to type is start, tack, or dash, or minus sign, but we call it tack in the field. Process, notepad. When I select enter, guess what happens? In theory, no patch it load. Now, one of the things, there are other commands. You notice this doesn't give any feedback whatsoever. Okay, nothing happens. It just comes back. But if you notice right there, a little slow. <laughs> My VM is running a little bit slow. There's Notepad. Okay, so that's good. So let's go ahead and take it a step further. Like, what if we want to open Notepad Minimize? So we can use the command window style. And we can say Minimize. And that's going to open, look down at your taskbar. That's going to open PowerShell Minimize on the screen. Now, I mean, if you're doing something nefarious or maybe you're doing something legitimate, you don't work on the screen, but you need to open a window, but you don't want the user to see it or notice it, you can open it Minimize like that. But there's even a better way. So we, we use Minimize. What about Maximize? Well, let's do that. What if we just want to open it Maximize, but first we need to close it. So let's go ahead and click here. Close Notepad. So maximize and press enter and that's going to open powershell maximize now there's also a little thing that you can do you can open uh you can open notepad hidden and some programs or some nefarious programs programmers or malware they do this they can open hidden window because for some reason they may need to run something but if you notice wow notepad is open but you don't see it so how do we find notepad we can use from the previous exercises the get dash process notepad. This won't run if I'm not mistaken because you have to use the tack name or minus name parameter. Oh, that actually did run. Okay. Sometimes when you're doing these programs, you have to do a tack name and then notepad. Let's well, see, that should run too. Okay. So either way, we know notepad is running. So we're going to use something from the previous exercise stop process. And I encourage you to check out those. So I think I do have to use the tag name here. So notepad and see, that's going to give an error because you, I'm pretty sure with the stop in the process, tag name is required. So let's give it a second. My VM's a little slow. Okay. That's what I expect. Okay. Let's use the clear command. All right. We'll bring that back up. Okay. So let's now let's go ahead and let's see if we can stop the process. So I'm going to, I'm going to get the process notepad and then I'm going to stop it. And I want to use the tag name parameter and that kills notepad. Now you notice I didn't get any output, so I'm going to address that later. So now let's say if I want to open Microsoft Edge and run Microsoft Edge. Okay, so I'll same process. 
start process and it's MS Edge. You know, it could be Chrome, but this should error out. Okay, and we wanna show you why in just a second. Because right now, the program doesn't necessarily have something built in to, to automatically know where Edge. Some programs it does, but I think Edge is one where it does not automatically know the location of Edge. So we're gonna to have to provide that information to it. So once again, sorry about the slow VM, but this should error out or give some kind of return or message in just a second. Okay, so I didn't even notice this right here on the taskbar. It's actually open. There it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start without data. Let's continue without this data. We just wanna get going. Okay, okay, we got Edge open. So let's go ahead and get that done. Now, this will be easier to work with. So this is the first time for that Edge is gonna be opening. So of course it wants to do all those things, get profiles, okay? So we did start process image, MS Edge. That actually worked. I feel like it worked because I, I don't know. It didn't work the first time, but let me show you something else. So sometimes there are programs that you wanna run that may not be automatically detected. And so in those situations, you have to actually specify the file location. So let me show you where MS Edge is really located on your computer. So if I go to this PC, C colon, and we're gonna to go to Program Files x86. Then we're gonna to go to Microsoft. And then after that, we're gonna to go to, go to Microsoft, sorry, x86, Microsoft, and then Edge. And inside that, you see an application folder, and then there's MS Edge right there. Okay, so that is the actual location of MS Edge. I wanna copy this. So if you see this path up here, if I click over here in the white space, see how it brings that down and condenses that. That's a nice little shortcut so I can copy the path. So now I wanna go start process MS Edge, and I'm gonna do something totally different. I'm gonna say dash um, or tag, right, file path. It does not have to be capital. I'm gonna capitalize it just to kind of make it easier. See, the file path, I'm gonna put that in quotes. Anytime you have a space, like in this program space files, you need to use double quotes. Uh, and that's application, but I also wanna put at the end of this, MS Edge. And if I've got that file path correct, there it is, MS Edge opens. So any program on a computer, if you know the, the file path to an executable or some program that you can double click and run, then in theory, you'll be able to do this. All right, so let's go back now. So that's one way can do, we can do this. Now, you notice I'm not getting any feedback, so we're gonna use what's called a pass-through. P-A-S-S-T-H-R-U, okay? Now, when I open Edge this time, I'm gonna close it, and you'll see what I get. Notice that I actually got the process ID, so which is interesting, so that's good. So that the way that you get feedback is to use the TAC pass T-H-R-U command, okay? Hope that helps you now. Let's go ahead and transition a little bit. Let's change this a little bit. So a lot of times, instead of actually using um, the entire name right here, all the way down to the application, and by the way, we could have put .exe on, on the end of MS Edge, okay, if you want to. So I'm gonna say file path, and then I'm gonna set a working directory by using the TAC working. So I'll just put the case and uh, you know, capitalize everything. So working, working directory, space, double quotes, because it's got a space in it. I'm gonna paste that, and so there it is. So what I'm doing now is basically I'm saying, okay, I want to run the program, the file path, which, which is the name of the program, and then the location of it, which is the working directory for MSS. And I, you know, if everything works right, it should work just like we did before, okay? MS Edge opens, no issue there, everything is fine. And honestly, so this is this is kind of it. That's pretty much it for this tutorial for start process. This is kind of something you can go back, you may wanna go back through and run through this really simple tutorial, but the next step in the process is, okay, let's actually look at some vulnerabilities and let's see if we can start using PowerShell to be able to manipulate the vulnerabilities. But remember, PowerShell is amazing because you can do just about anything on a computer that you can do with your hand by clicking in PowerShell. So anyway, once again, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Don't forget to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for more cybersecurity skills 
that I actually use on my job as a cybersecurity engineer. And I can assure you that just getting a security plus is not enough. Okay. If you go to SANS, SEC 401 and 504 class, that probably will do it. But certifications like security plus and network plus alone, it just makes you one of millions. So I'm going to show you the real stuff. So subscribe to the channel and uh, thanks for watching.